In the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. May the Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one in nature and one in essence, bless you, guide you, protect you, and deliver you from the snares of the enemy, whether it be visible and or invisible. In Jesus' mighty name, we always pray. For he is the only way to the Father, and he is the only way to the truth, and he is the only way to eternal life. Amen. The Gospel of today is according to St. Luke, and it, is, um, it includes two chapters from uh, chapter 12, um, verse 57 till the end and chapter 13 till verse 17. The Lord Jesus in this gospel of today is talking to the Jews. And he's saying, why do you not judge for yourselves what is right? He's asking everyone to judge for themselves what is right. He says, as you go with your accuser before the magistrate, make an effort to settle with him on the way, lest he drag you to the judge, and the judge hand you over to the officer, and the officer put you in prison. I tell you, you will never get out till you have paid the very last copper or penny. Why don't you just judge for yourselves what is right? While you are going with your accuser before the magistrate, make an effort to settle with him on the way. Lest he take you to the judge and then the judge take, sends you to the officer and the officer puts you in prison and you're not gonna leave that prison until you pay the last cent you owe. Who is our accuser while we are walking along the way with him? Who is the accuser? The accuser is your enemy. The accuser is the one who is your enemy. Every single one of us, we have enemies to us. There is sin, there is condemnation there is Satan and there is death but the greatest enemy of all is me I am the number one accuser of my own self I am the number one enemy to my own self and this is one of the main reasons, not the only reason, but one of the main reasons why God did not put an end to that angel that broke his word while he was in heaven and later on became Satan. That one of the main reasons why God didn't put an end to Satan, because if Satan is my enemy, then I myself am a greater enemy than Satan to my own self. And this is where the Lord Jesus said, do not be afraid of the one who kills the body, but has no authority over your spirit. But I say to you, be more so afraid of the one who kills the body and has the authority to throw your spirit in hell. Who is the one that kills the body, but has no power, authority over the spirit? Satan and Satan through people. People which go, go against me because Satan is behind this, the ultimate they can do is kill the flesh, but they have no power to kill the spirit. Satan can kill the flesh, but has no power to kill the spirit when the spirit is committed to the hand of the Almighty Heavenly Father. The Lord Jesus on the cross 
He said, Father, in your hand, I commit my spirit. So I'm the greatest enemy. Make peace with your accuser while you're walking with him along the way. While you are still alive is walking. While the spirit is in the flesh, I'm still walking. Who is my accuser? The flesh. Who needs to make amends with the flesh? The spirit. The spirit is placed in this flesh. And as long as the spirit is in the, fle in the flesh, the spirit is walking along with the flesh who is the accuser. He says, settle your case. The flesh. The spirit says, I want to go to church. The flesh says, I'm taking you to the club. The spirit says, I want to praise the Lord. The flesh says, I will swear at everything around me. The spirit says, I want to be in the light. The flesh says, I'm taking you downtown where darkness awaits you. The spirit says, I want to be in the, with the Lord Jesus. The flesh says, I'll take you to Satan. The flesh is the accuser all day long. The spirit wants to pray. The flesh wants to sing. Worldly song. The spirit wants to fast. The flesh says, in your dreams. One day, they came to Michelangelo, this artist. So they asked him, they said, Michael, and hello to everyone who's Michael. Said Michael, says, yes, we would like you to draw us a portrait depicting fasting. He said, leave it with me. Come back at a later stage. So he done the painting, he finished, he called them, said, come. The portrait, he split it in half. They looked at it, had no idea what Michelangelo meant in that painting. One half of the portrait, there was a very chubby pig and a very skinny um, eagle being dragged on the ground behind the pig. So the pig dragged that eagle, that skeleton, behind him on the ground. The other half, a very chubby and healthy eagle and a very skinny skeleton pig grabbed by that eagle and taken that skinny pig in the heavens, soaring very high in the heavens. They said, we wanted a painting reflecting fasting. What is this, Michael? He said, let me explain. He said, the pig is your flesh. The eagle is your spirit. You feed the flesh and you starve the spirit. The flesh will grab the spirit and drag it in the streets of King's Cross. The flesh will grab your spirit and drag it in drugs, in alcoholism, in gambling, in everything that is against the almighty God's will that is under the sun. He said, but when you feed the spirit, look after the spirit and starve the flesh, the spirit will grab the flesh and will make it fly high in the heavens of Christ. You will take the flesh where he dislikes, but the flesh will be taken whether the flesh likes it or not. 
the first time you dragged the flesh to the church it was used to sitting in the club it was used to sitting in a concert it was used to sitting in the midst of friends laughing drinking huffing and puffing and doing everything illegal in the sight of God and the flesh was having fun never went to sleep never said I'm tired never said this is boring never said uh, this is enough never it was enough but by the grace of the Lord reaching out to you touching you so deeply and profoundly awakened that sleepy conscience yet I can dare to say dead conscience because the Lord Jesus is known to raise the dead when he awakened that sleepy dead conscience in you for the first time you wake up and you say I'm going to church where this good-looking bishop is preaching I had to rub that one in eh? actually not just the best looking bishop <laughs> you came the first time and you sat in the church Man, it was a life sentence. I'm sitting and I am aching all over. I've got a headache. Actually, it's a migraine now because the bishop speaks for too long. So I've got a migraine. Every bone in me is aching. My back is gone. My knees are gone. My eyes are gone. I'm falling asleep. I'm yawning. I'm turning. I'm getting up. I'm stretching. I just want to get out of there I'm suffocating but the Lord says judge for yourself what is right but deep down when I left inside of me there was something different so I came back again and again and again and again what did I do by coming back to the Lord again and again and again I allowed the Lord to feed my spirit my spirit that was malnourished my spirit that was always almost dying off is revived in me the spirit became strong the spirit became healthy the spirit became revived I am alive from within for the first time ever in my entire life this till this very moment I have tasted what true inner peace is all about I slept that night at peace no fear no anxiety Calm. and then I got up I said buddy he said oink 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 he's a pig huh just like Tony the Maltese he said he was eating so much too much ended up eating like a pig in it I love the Maltese Allah. See, the Maltese language has Arabic, and I speak Arabic, so we're, we're, we're neighbors, eh? we're cousins. Yo, go the Maltese baby. So, the spirit became strong. I disciplined the flesh. When, when great Lent, when the great Lent comes, you know, fasting time comes, some people, they just don't know what to do. Um, I'm going to give up on chocolate. Because when I see chocolate, I, I'm weak. When I see abla, I'm weak. You know, I don't know, I think it was in Granville somewhere. Is it still there? Abla in the corner? Okay, go abla, yalla. <laughs> when I see chocolate, 
When I see all this Lebanese sweets, man, how can I, how can I resist? This is Habib Albi's done it. From the heart to the heart, heart to heart, huh? Basita. Mm. So when I saw all those sweets, I was shaking. I couldn't. Um, I have to watch YouTube. I have to watch TV. I have to do this. I have to eat when I see food. Oh, I can't. You're telling me for 50 scorching days you can't have meat? Are you kidding me? Man, I'll lose it. I'm going to kill you. I'm going to kill you and then barbecue you and I'll eat you if you don't give me meat. So they try to punish the flesh. And they struggle. The Lord is never about punishment. The Lord is all about discipline. There is a huge difference. Don't punish your child. Discipline your child, mom and dad. Punishment is you yell, you scream, you lose it, and you smack them. Discipline, my baby, come here. Yes, I know. They liked it, huh? They said, yeah, please tell my mom and dad to talk like this. <laughs> talk this way to me, please. My angel, come here. Habibi. You spilled the milk on daddy's couch. And now daddy can't sit on that couch because it's all wet and it's sticky. It's okay, my darling. The milk, the couch, and daddy, ruhulik fidwa. All for your eyes' sake. You are my daddy's angel. I love you more than anything and everything in this whole world, not just in this house. But let me tell you and show you one thing, my darling, that we need to learn how to behave and to do things at home, outside of home, everywhere else. She will spill the milk again. That's okay, darling. Mommy's paying for it. Doesn't matter. We discipline. One day, this young man, about 20, 21 years of age, I've said this story. I'll share it again. He approached me. He said, Father, I said, yes, son. He said, Father, I've, I want to confess. I want to sit with you one-on-one -on -one, and I want to confess everything that I've done in my life till this moment. He was about 20, 21 years of age. I said, yeah, no problem. He said, but I'm, I'm very, very scared to take this step. I said, why, son? He said, because my fear is if I sit with you and tell you what I've done, which I am not proud of at all, but my worry is once I tell you what I've done, you will know what I've done. Your look at me will change. Will you look at me differently, Father, once I tell you what I've done? I said, of course I will change toward you. He went pale and he went back. He said, this is exactly, that's what I was fearing. You see, you're going to change toward me. I'm not going to confess. I said, hang on. You asked me, if you confess, will you, will you look at me differently? I said, yes, but you didn't ask me in which way I will look at you differently. He said, what do you mean? I said, well, ask. He said, okay, Father, how are you going to change toward me? I said, before I answer you, let me ask you this question, my dear son. Do you believe that I love you as a son in Christ Jesus? He said, yes, Father. I said, are you sure? 100% you believe that I love you as my own son in Christ? He said, I have no doubt whatsoever in this, as, in this regard. I said, well, 
Now, my son, I love you once. After you confess, I love you a million times moreover. This is the way I'll change toward you. He started crying and he confessed. Discipline. Don't put fear in people, put hope. Put hope. I've sat with people that have done things beyond your imagination, but they left crying like a baby for the Lord Jesus. Discipline the body. One day, we were doing a Bible preach for the youth in English. And I walked, and then after, shortly after that, two young men from the church committee came running after me. They said, Bishop, this young girl, she was sitting and putting her, crossing her legs and she didn't even move while you passed by. She was disrespectful to you. We're gonna go and tell her off. I said, she disrespected me, didn't she? Yes, not you. No, it was you, Father. I said, do you see me upset? Do you see me angry? I said, what's it to you? Okay, cool down, bro. Relax. After one month of coming, she kissed the bishop's ring. Don't force it. Poor girl was her first time ever to come into church. She has no idea. She looked at me as Gray mate. After a little while, she realized, okay, he's a bishop. Or I learned. Oh, he's a father. Yeah, okay. Okay, this is the custom in the church. Okay, you kiss the ring as a, as a token of respect for the priesthood ring. Okay, I've learned now. The aircon is on cool. Was it hot? It's cold? It's hot. It's hot, it's cold. <laughs> um... Discipline the body while you have the chance, while you are living, walking in, on this earth. It is extremely easy to be forgiven by the Lord as long as the Spirit is in the flesh. Don't wait for the Spirit to leave the flesh and start prophesying about where it's gonna go. Listen, mate, focus on earth. Don't focus elsewhere. If you can't fix what you see, how can you fix what you can't see? Anybody home? While you're in the flesh, the Lord is very clear. Come, I won't let you go out empty handed. Just come. Just come. But if I get thrown in the prison, who says I'm gonna come out? Who says? The Lord entered a synagogue and it was a Sabbath, Saturday. And then he saw this woman who had this hump so her head was looking downward. She's got a big hump on her back. She can't lift her head up. 18 years she has been in this condition. 18 years not able to see heaven, the sky. The only thing she was able to see for 18 years was 
earth, the dirt, the dust, the mud, the filth. The filth of the world. All of us, before the Lord Jesus came, we all had this hump. And all of us, we were ill. We were in this condition for 18 years. This woman represents every single human being. Why 18? Why the number 18? Because the number 18 has got to do with 8 and 10. 10 commandments. God gave to Moses 10 commandments. The law of God. The law of God. 8 represent resurrection. Because the Lord Jesus rose from the dead on the eighth day, which is Sunday. Now, when you read in Genesis 1, when you read in Genesis 1 about the creations, the days of creation, the first day of the week is Sunday and the eighth day is Sunday. From Sunday to Sunday is eight days. This is why the Lord Jesus rose from the dead on Sunday, i.e. the eighth day. Why the eighth, number eight, represent resurrection, eternal, and what is resurrection? Eternity, eternal life. Because this realm is governed by seven, the number seven, seven days of the week. This realm walks by seven. The next realm, heaven, the heavenly Father's house, that realm walks by one day, and this day has no end forever and ever and evermore. Amen. That day is the eighth. Number eight is outside the time of this realm. It represents eternal life. And when you put number eight on its side, you get the symbol of eternity. Two circles inside one another. You put a dot anywhere, that dot can be the beginning and that dot can be at the same time the end. But neither to that beginning there is a beginning nor to that end an end. You're going with no beginning and no end. Number eight, eternity. All of us, we, the ultimate we achieved, we saw the filth of this world. Why? Because all of us have fallen short of the glory of God. No one is good but God. All of us have sinned. And sin made this back tilt down with a big hump. And this head was not able to see heaven anymore. All it was able to see, the filth of this world. The Lord Jesus came died on the cross, fulfilled the Ten Commandments, the technical ones, and the entire commandments of God. He is the fullness and the fulfillment of all God's law. By dying on the cross, He fulfilled the Ten Commandments, which I broke all. And on Sunday, when He rose from the dead, he fixed that hump and he said to me, stand straight. And when I stood straight, the first thing this woman did, she praised God. And the way you praise God is when you are able to lift your head up to heaven where our Father who art in heaven is. And she looked up to heaven for the first time in 18 years, she was able to see heaven where God is. She praised Him. When we had an encounter with the Lord Jesus, it was for the first time ever I saw the face of God, heaven. All I used to see before was the face of Satan, hell, the world, the pig's field. I was swimming in sin. I was swimming in poison. The Lord Jesus 
by his precious blood that he shed on the cross on Calvary, by his death, burial and resurrection, said, lift up your head high and thank God for what, he's, uh, for what he has done for you. He sent you his only begotten son so that whoever believeth in him never perish but have everlasting life. Amen.